You're listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. In this podcast, we'll hear a message from Pastor Robert. So here we are in week number five, the series, A Place Called There, and the sermon title is Be On Your Guard. And I pray today that you really pay attention and that you listen to what God has for you and I today. There were more cities to capture. That means there was more battles to fight. It doesn't matter how old you are in this room today, there will be more battles for you. But I got good news for you. In Christ, we are built for the battle. Do you hear me? We are built for the battle. Amen? There was more cities to capture. I want you to hear what 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, I'm reading out of the NIV. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. All across this room this morning, and those by internet, there's people that are going through problems, and maybe you say, well, my goodness, what happened? Herb, what happened when the cancer report came? Andy, what happened when your cancer report? Sarah, let's get ready to start chemo. Don't be surprised when things come on us because we are living in a world. Do you hear me? We are living in this world. We've not made it home yet. We're living in a corrupt, sinful world. But just hold on and try again. Just keep trying. Don't give up because at the end of the journey will be your last battle and death cannot defeat us when we are in Christ. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen? Come on, give God a hand clap. And a shout of praise. One defeat, one defeat does not lose the battle. But you need to hear me. One victory doesn't win the war. You hear what I said? One defeat don't mean that you lost the battle, but one victory don't mean you won the war. Because you and I are going to keep battling till the Lord takes us home. Somebody say amen. amen. There is a devil. Can someone say yes? There is a devil and he's not excited about the prospect of victory for the people of God. Satan just not going to pack up one day and say, well, you know, I'm going to give up. He's got more strength than a lot of Christians because he just keeps trying again. You understand what I'm saying? The devil's not excited. He's not going to give up. In 1 Peter 5 and 8, be alert and sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Well, let me tell you who he's looking for. He's looking for somebody that's isolated themselves. Somebody that said, I'm going through a storm. Oh, pastor, I just can't make myself get up and come to church. I'll be back when the storm is over. That is a lie from the devil. Do you hear me? You need to be with God's people. You need to be surrounded with God's people. You need to hear the word of God. You need to be in a worship service because the Bible said, iron sharpens iron. Who's he after? That one that kind of gave up on their prayer life. The one that don't read and study the word of God no more. They just want to sit around and moan and complain. God is here. He's alive. He's well. He'll speak to you. He'll heal you. He'll deliver you. He'll protect you. He'll save you. Somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. You got to be aware of his strategy you got to recognize when the enemy seeks to lead us astray with deceptive actions. And I don't want you to forget that. Deceptive actions. And I'll tie it in in a little while later. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I believe it's verse 4, and no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Masquerades. Deceptive. Lie to you, connive. I want to share out of Joshua chapter 9. Now you can stand with me. Stand with me. I know you thought I was halfway finished. Joshua chapter 9, verse 3 through 6. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon 
heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai. They did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles and old and rent and bound up and old shoes. Some of you ladies would have had a problem with that. <laughs> and old shoes and clotted upon their feet and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua and to the camp at Gilgal, and said unto him, and to the men of Israel, We come from a far country. Now for, excuse me, now therefore make you a league with us, a line. Align yourselves with us. Be careful. Guard your mind who you align yourself with. Be careful who you align yourselves with. The Bible said you're either for God or you are against God. Do you hear me? There's no in between. And as the news about their victory became widespread, the Israelites experienced opposition in two forms. And I, I just found this so interesting. They found opposition in two forms. The first was kings in the area began to unite them, cells against them. Kings, what are kings? Kings are powerful. Kings are people of power. Remember this, people of power. The Gibeonites resorted to deception. They lied. So we got people of power coming against them, and now we've got the Gibeonites deceiving them. And you and I can expect the same kind of opposition as we obey God's commands and as we try to walk in the fullness of God's word, we will receive opposition from people in great power in government above us and all the way down. Do you hear me? We get our strength from God to endure direct pressure that comes upon us. We're living in a time that, that we choose to be silent instead of speaking the word of God because we don't want to, uh, to be left out or felt like we don't fit in. Uh, we don't want to rock the boat. Uh, but I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you say or what you do. Uh, what matters if, if you align what you say and what you do uh, in the word of God. And if you please God, it don't matter if you please anyone else. Uh, we can get our strength uh, to walk through direct pressure and to see ourselves through the trickery that people would like to deceive us. Listen, it don't matter what my opinion is. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. It doesn't matter about anyone else's opinion. It only matters uh, what what God says. Uh, do you hear me? It don't matter what anybody else, uh, the left or the right, or anybody in between, it comes down to the word of God. Somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. When the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to the city of Ai, they resorted to a plan to deceive Joshua and the people of Israel. They went with their donkeys uh, loaded with worn out sacks uh, of old wine skins. Uh, they were cracked. Uh, they had been mended. Uh, the men uh, put on worn and, and patched sandals on their feet and they wore old clothes. Uh, all their bread, the Bible said, uh, it looked like it was dry and moldy. And then they went to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and they said to him and to the men of Israel, we have come from a distant country, make a treaty with us. And they sought to convince 
Joshua that they were from far away and had been led to Israel as a result of hearing the great things of Israel's God. Isn't it amazing how some people, when they find themselves in need of someone else, they'll try to align themselves with the God that we serve. I don't want to hear about that. I want to see somebody's walk. I want you not to tell me about what you believe. I want you to show me what you believe by your actions. Somebody say amen this morning. The problem was God had told Joshua not to make an alliance with anyone. Be careful, I'm going to keep saying it, who you align yourself with. Uh, they were not to align themselves uh, with non-Israelites. Uh, and the lesson for us is that the devil is deceptive and will use anything to convince God's people to compromise. You need to hear me. The devil will use anything that he can to convince God's people to compromise. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm old school, uh, and I was raised in a holla. I was raised in an old-fashioned shouting and singing, hardcore preaching, uh, hellfire and brimstone. Uh, there is no other way, in my opinion, and we have been suckered in, we have been lied to as the body of Christ uh, that we can compromise and everything will be all right. Uh, well, everything is not all right, and when we compromise, we sell out God and we sell out the Word of God. Is there anyone in the house uh, that said, I just can't compromise? Compromise. Somebody, anybody in the house. Compromise uh, the church. What's wrong with America? It's the church. I'll tell you exactly. We've compromised. Uh, we said it's all right uh, to do this. It's all right to do that. It's okay to have a, 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 a homosexual in the pulpit preaching and divide an entire uh, conference, the United Methodist Church. I come today not to offend you. Uh, I come to tell you to be on guard. Uh, that's the lie of the devil. Do you hear me? We've just compromised. Compromised uh, that it's okay to have transgenders in, in our schoolhouse uh, and it's okay to have feminine products put in our boys' bathrooms uh, and I could go on and on and on and, and, and I prayed, uh, God, don't let me say anything. God, hide me behind the cross. Don't let me say a thing, God, that would bring shame to you. But I'm telling you, God, if we can sing about God being holy and we can walk right out of here and live like the devil and be deceived and compromised and let everything fall apart. But I'm not singing about a holy God if I'm not going to believe that he still is a holy God. He's still a righteous God. Somebody give him a hand clap. And I said somebody. Somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. He's still God. I said he's still God. Woo! He's still God. And we can't, listen to me, we can't compromise. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Man, I'm, I'm focused, I'm focused. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Can't do it. And behind everything is money. Behind everything and everybody, I shouldn't say everybody. Most people misquote it. Money's the root of all evil. No, that's not. The love of money is the root of all evil. Do you hear me? Yeah. Satan used subtle, subtle ways to draw us from the things of God. Well, I can't speak up. If I speak up, then they may not play my son on first base. Can you imagine where we have come to? that we worry more about Johnny playing on first base. Well, he, he may not be batting clean up. Why don't we clean some other things up? Huh? Whew. You prayed for fresh manna today in my office. Listen to me. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God really said? 
you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Hath God said? Why don't we look about what God said? Why don't we study a little bit about what God says? Huh? I ain't concerned about Dr. Phil, Oprah, Beyonce, Hulk Hogan, both sides of the aisle. They want to bring all these people in and draw a crowd. I ain't worried about that. Do you hear me? None of them. I'm worried about what God says. It don't matter what they say. They're like a fish in a pan. Fly. It'll be gone. The next person will step up. I don't know where that came from, fish in a pan. I'm going to preach. Satan will not try to get us to deny the entire Bible. That's not what Satan's up to. He knows we're not going to do that. He's going to get us to compromise. You give him an inch, what? He takes a mile. My goodness. His content to entice us to compromise in small ways. Like this Tuesday, the election. We just go in and we compromise. We vote according to tradition. We vote according to the way well, I was born. And I'm, I've been born again. And I'm not going to vote Republican. I'm not going to vote Libertarian. I'm not going to vote Democrat. I'm going to vote Bible. Bible. Listen, if this ruffles... If this ruffles your feathers, I apologize. Not really. I don't know where that came from either. Wasn't in, I don't know if that was anointed, all right? So let's listen, a blatant blunder. Let's listen. Joshua, before I go there, is it not amazing that every week that I've been on this series, that victory came only when they followed God's word? Am I right, Pastor? And when they didn't follow God's word, defeat. Nothing's ever changed. In Joshua chapter 9, verse 14, and the men took of their victuals, and ask not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Uh-oh. They took and they didn't ask counsel. All I'm doing today is asking you, because I'm telling you, America's in bad shape. You need to hear me. What I'm asking you to do is to take counsel. Ask, ask God. Ask God. Do your research. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live and the princes of the congregation swear unto them. Israel's leaders had been deceived. God had specifically instructed Israel to make no treaties with the inhabitants of Canaan. Joshua knew better and Joshua's leaders knew better and they made a decision on their own. And when you and I make a decision on our own, we are in trouble a lot of times we'll make a decision because we don't want to offend somebody in our own family. I'd rather offend somebody in my own family than offend God. Amen. Seeking God's will before entering into agreements is critical. Seeking God's will before entering into a voter's booth is critical. Joshua did not seek the counsel of God and thus he failed to see the truth. How easily do we fall in that same trap? Paul reminds us that the devil blinds people's eyes to the need for the gospel. We need the gospel in every area of our lives. There's not an area in our life that the gospel don't have the answer for. None. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. <laughs> Why would we listen to someone that's been blinded that believe not? Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan is the God of this world. His work is to deceive. He's a liar and the father of. And the allure of money and the allure of power blinds people to the light of Christ. And we are ashamed. We are silent 
and we don't speak up. Listen, we will never on this journey walking with Christ. We will never reach the place that we no longer need to read our Bible. We will never reach a place that we no longer need to pray and no longer need to commune with God. So in verse 26, we see a graceful gesture. And so did he unto them and deliver them out of the hand of the children of Israel that they slew them not. So Joshua saved them from the Israelites and they did not kill them. Even though Joshua and the Israelites entered into a bad alliance, they kept their oath. Two wrongs don't make a right. Anybody ever hear that? My dad was so good at that. Well, everybody else was doing two wrongs don't make a right. Amen. In the grace of God, in Joshua chapter 9, verse 27, and Joshua made them that day hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord, even unto this day in the place which he should choose. The Gibeonites do not justify their lie when they came, but they was pleading for their lives to be saved. Every head bowed and every eye closed. And listen, I'm not finished. Please stay with me. Don't run for the door, please. Joshua sentenced them to perpetual bondage, that they must be servants. Any work becomes honorable when it's done for the Lord. All over this auditorium this morning, before I go into the next part of this message, how about your soul? Don't compromise. Don't put it off. Don't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come for you. God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you. Don't, don't let the devil deceive you and tell you, oh, you have plenty of time. Because you don't know that. I would beg you if I can, but you can't be saved unless the Spirit of God is drawn. And if the Spirit is speaking to you, you know. So as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, right where you're at, I'm not going to single you out. Would you slip up your hand real high and say, Today, Pastor, I'd like to give my life to Jesus. I'd like to surrender. I'd like to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, would you forgive me of my sins? Is there one in the house? I want to just tarry for a moment. Tarry for a moment. If death knocked on your door today, would heaven be your home? My friend, if it's, you can't answer that yes, and you need to make that decision today. Is there one? Is there one? I see that hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else. Somebody else, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. Sometimes I get in a hurry, I see that, I see that hand. Thank you. Yes, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. Let's just tarry for a moment right here. I see your hand, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, yes. Somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. Would you all stand with me this morning? Every head up and every eye open. If you raise your hand this morning, that don't save you. But from your heart, from your lips, and you pray and you ask God in a sincere, heartfelt prayer. Pray this prayer and mean it from the bottom of your heart. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, today, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. Lord, cleanse me. I've failed. I've fallen short. I've sinned. But today, by your grace, God, I'm forgiven. And Lord, I'm sorry. And Lord, from this day forward, I do my very best to live my life for you. My friend, if you prayed that prayer and you mean it, I want to welcome you to the family of God.
Go ahead, church. Go ahead, church. And I want to share with you that this is not the end. This is the beginning. And you need to grow. You need to grow in Christ. You need to learn. Somebody will come to you shortly and give you a Bible. If for some reason they overlook you, please stop at the information desk. They'll have you fill out a connect card. We'll reach out to you. We'll try to help you. Now let me finish what I believe God has laid on my heart today. The Bible said in Hosea, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Be careful who you align yourself with when you go to vote. Be very careful. Millionvoices.org, you can go there. It can give you examples. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for, but you need to realize what some of the things are that are going on. Schools allow removal of books based on age appropriateness. They want to allow, we want to take books out of schools from kindergarten to 12th grade to remove books with explicit sexual content or gender ideology. Can I tell you it's not the government's role to teach my child these certain things? And I'm going to give you a Bible. One party agrees that, yes, we should take this filth out of our schools. The other party disagrees. Well, I'm going to give you what God says. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 8. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. You can study that talking mostly about children. It's my responsibility. It's not the government's. Second thing is gender ideology, shared restroom access. Want to require schools to provide menstrual products in both boys' and girls' restrooms and allow shared restroom access. One party disagrees, one party agrees. Here's what the Bible says about gender. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Transgender agenda to allow males identifying as females in female sports. We've had it right here in our county. Includes sexual ideology in grade schools. And citizens should pay for sex changes of those that are in prison. Be on guard. Be not deceived. Kings back in Joshua Day, powerful people. Has it changed? No. There's something in, something in it for them. Gender transition sanctuary for children. Create a legal right for children to obtain sex change operations and treatments. Government must step in and help children transition if parents object. It's on the ballot. You say no, government wants to step in. One party disagrees with that and one agrees with it. Huh. Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go even when he is old and he will not depart from it. This proverb here was founded on the covenant with Abraham encouraging parents to train up their child, not the government. Not the government. I ain't finished. Transgender agenda. Allow males identifying as females in female sports include sexual ideology in grade schools. Wow. 
late-term abortion and taxpayer-funded abortion. Women have a right to abort their babies through the ninth month. Taxpayers fund abortions. One party disagrees, one party agrees. Wow. Wow. Psalms chapter 139. Psalms chapter 139, verse 13, David. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and courageously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuous were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. My side note says, God's character goes into the creation of every single person. Do you hear me? It's wrong. It's wrong. And I'm not ashamed and I'm not backwards to not stand before you as your pastor and tell you killing a baby is wrong. Amen. Hold on. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to Elizabeth, her cousin, and Elizabeth was pregnant, carrying John the Baptist, the front runner for Jesus Christ, the baby leaped in her womb. Lifeless babies don't kick. Do you hear me? When we abort a baby, we are murdering a child. And there's, hold on, there's kings, powerful people that have shoved this lie and we have compromised and we have bought into a lie. Friend, it is not of God. If I offend you, then you take it to God. But I'm going to bring the word of God. It is murder. And listen, these people, it all comes back to the love of money. Do you hear me? And these people celebrate in the streets and have parades and jump up and down when they have a victory over abortion. God Forgive America, do you hear me? And every one of us can play a part. Oh, I'm not, I'm not here to get you to clap. I'm telling you that the amount of Christians in America that don't even vote, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. My brother went to Vietnam. My uncles fought in the war. Most of your families went and fought that we could have freedom and we sit back in a recliner chair and think that everything is all right. Brother, we may not be in the battle that they were in, but we are in a greater battle and it is a spiritual battle and we need to speak up as Christians and say enough is enough and I'm going to go vote and take America back. Now you give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. Thank you for listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. 